In Tech Time with me, Andrew Humphrey, NASA's Perseverance rover will be the first rover to land on Mars in almost a decade. And local researchers right here in Detroit and Southeast Michigan are interested in the landing alone. They say it may help with future Mars missions. The Perseverance rover will set foot on Mars in a sky crane maneuver. The spacecraft carrying it will hover above the Martian surface, then lower the rover to the ground like a shipping crate. Landing a vehicle, let alone lowering one like the Perseverance rover, on Mars, a planet over 120 miles away, is no easy feat. That harsh environment during landing is very challenging. A group of Michigan scientists and engineers are interested in what happens when booster rockets fire in order to hang in mid-Martian air. They can kick up dust and rocks. And th these particles can travel at near orbital speeds. We're talking about they're traveling supersonic towards the spacecraft. Blowing away the red planet's sand or loose soil can reveal craters. And that rocket exhaust is interacting with that crater and that could cause the spacecraft to become unstable and, and eventually not land. And throw on top of that, future missions planned with people, astronauts traveling to Mars. When you send people, now th these problems become amplified. These Michigan researchers are working with NASA to develop computer models that simulate landing on Mars. When this lands on Thursday, there's going to be cameras and microphones to try to get a sense on what's happening. And that data is still very limited, but it's useful. Earth is not Mars, so it is extremely difficult to recreate Martian conditions for physical experimentation, like zero gravity flights or underwater exercises. And Apollo moon landing information is old and sparse. Instead of actually doing a physical experiment, doing a computer simulation to be able to uh, understand and predict that harsh environment during landing. We're developing algorithms and codes to run simulations on very large supercomputers to try to be able to predict this type of environment during landing. The landing of the Perseverance rover will, in turn, help develop landing techniques for future Mars missions. So that's where this work comes in, is to give us reliable, predictive simulation capabilities so that the next generation spacecraft can indeed be designed around these challenges. And their work may inspire the first person to step on Mars, who may be from Motown. And we try to come up with motivating examples, right, to, to motivate students and, and young people to go in this line of work. I don't know of any better example as, you know, we're sending spacecrafts to other planets and don't know how to fit, you know, we haven't figured out how to do this successfully yet. It's just a great excuse to do science. And hopefully motivating the scientist, the engineer, the astronaut in your own heart and in your own household. What an inspiration, especially to young people right here in Detroit and Southeast Michigan, and much of that work being done right here. Once again, the Mars Perseverance rover lands this Thursday. It can be seen live on the internet, and I'll, be, I'll put a click, I'll put a link on it for you on this story on the Tech Time portion of our website, click on Detroit.com. That's Tech Time with Andrew Humphrey. Back over to you, Priya and Grant. Isn't that amazing? It's fantastic, and I love that uh, you know that scientist was saying that this is a great excuse to explore science. You know, Andrew, you're our STEM expert. When do you think we could actually see you know people on Mars? Oh boy, ever. you know the goal is to have that done within the next maybe 10, 15, or even 20 years. But it's ground waking, groundbreaking yeah. work like this yeah. done by local researchers and researchers and teams from all over the world to hopefully make that happen. See, I was just hoping it happened in a couple of months while the pandemic was still going on. <laughs> it's about the same thing, really. Yeah. Fantastic well, we know it's a good story. Excuse also to stay indoors, especially on this Valentine's Day, and learn more about it. Absolutely. Kids, kids of today become our scientists, engineers, and astronauts of the future. And we'll be looking forward to that link to see when it lands. Thanks, Andrew.